It's here. Listen to other great tech podcasts at www.techpodcasts.com. This is Tech Web. Computers. Projects. And other geeky stuff. It's awesome. And it's from the future. Follow us at twitter.com slash techwebcast and on Facebook and check techwebcast.info for info. Techwebcast. Turn on, tune in, drop on. Welcome to episode 247 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 13th of July 2013. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Your hosts today are Brad, Jody, Steve, Jacob, Fridley, and myself, Andrew. Today's special guest is Matthew from Quello.com. Quello is the world's leading on-demand streaming service for full-length HD concerts and music documentaries. How you doing there, Brad? Hello, Mr. Andrew. How are you, buddy? I'm doing very well, buddy. Been out this morning, had a bit of a run and been off to the gym. So I just had some brunch and ready to move. All right, let's get to the point. Let's get to the chase here. Zarfo, what do you, what's been happening with Zarfo? What do you been having? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we are, we're working away. We actually secured a an angel round of funding uh, just this week, which is really fantastic. So it means that we are definitely going to get through to the end of the the project and, and the app is starting to come along really well. So we're we're a couple months away from sort of hitting the shelves, but we are starting to starting to, you know, hit our stride. So starting to get there. There's a bit happening in the background. So we'll we'll certainly keep you involved and let you know how we're going when the very, time comes. Very cool. I, I couldn't believe that. You actually put an ad in the paper. Explain to people how you, how it all works. And stuff. Oh, look, we, you know, we, we there's an opportunity and, and we, we advertise to, to get a few people in to have a look at it. And, um, you know, we, we uh, had someone who was quite keen, liked the idea of what we're doing and wanted to get involved. So it, it's really simple. We sort of, you know, there's a, there's a few privacy documents and NDAs and things that, that go around in the background, yeah. but... You know, we, um, we, we're now fully funded to execute our project, which should be good. And win, lose or draw, you know, it, it's billionaire or broke, but we, we're out there having a go. And, at, you know, when the time comes, we'll, we'll hit the market and see how we go. Exactly. I, all I want to say is good on you, Andrew, and you've done a good job so far, mate. And, yeah. Cheers, Brad. And, uh, yeah. All right. We have got uh, uh, James from Sydney on. Welcome, James. G'day. You're new to the podcast. You're on here to do talk about some news stories that's been happening, and uh, good to have you on, mate. Likewise, uh, thanks for having me. No problem. Also, we've got Steve from the US. Welcome, Steve. Hey, how you doing again, Brad and and co-hosts? And uh, yep, welcome. You, you, how's your week been, Steve? Any news you want to report on? Uh, not really. Um, I was pretty busy this week. Uh, I had to uh, shoot a video wedding video thing, so uh, that's been keeping me pretty busy. All right, nice one, uh, Jacob Jones from the US as well. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Brad. Uh, and how has your day been? It's been good, mate. How's your week been? Pretty good. Rainy right now. Really? Thunderstorms? Yeah, it looks like a freaking sto- strobe lights outside my window. Well, move to Australia. Uh, Jody Range is from the US as well. Welcome, Jody. Hey, hi, Brad. How's it going? And I also think you should move to Australia as well because you've got bad weather as well. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little bit rainy. And uh, also got Matthews from Quilla. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, thank you for having me. Nice to meet you, Brad. Good to have you on, mate. Um, so, uh, Andrew, want to jump with some news? Jody, some news first, and then uh, we'll, uh, yeah. Sure, absolutely. So, interesting news coming out of AT&T today. Um, apparently, they are acquiring Leap Wireless Cricket for about $1.2 billion. Reported in TechCrunch today, um, Cricket customers will be part of AT&T, and currently it looks like they're going to be um, keeping their own format, running their own brand. Cricket stores will continue to be Cricket stores. The two carriers are just going to share a spectrum, which should increase network quality for everyone. If the deal goes through, this will bump AT&T from 107 million subscribers to 112, which which is still just behind Verizon in the battle for the biggest U.S. carrier. AT&T says that they plan to pay $15 per share, 79 million leap shares outstanding. This works out to be just short of one point two. Billion dollars. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. Wow, wow. I know, right? It's a lot. 
when I first seen that story, uh, Jody, this is gonna be you. Uh, but I actually thought it was cricket to do with sport. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! It's it's Jody. That's interesting. I mean, do you think they bought them because of the move the move music that they have? Because they've been looking for music um, for quite some time to add to their platform. Um, that's probably one reason, but I think also um, cricket is kind of a month to month service. You know, it, so it's, you know, a lot of uh, young people, um, less expensive. And plus it was a, a big uh, user base that they could kind of like incorporate. I think they're all vying for who's going to have the, the largest market share. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, I have a pre prepaid phone from AT&T. Yeah. And Jacob, yes. It, it works pretty well. Does it? Okay, good stuff. Andrew, you have a view on that story? Did you want to say about that story? Not really. Just uh, with the cricket, go the Aussies in the ashes. That's pretty much what I've got to say about that story. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Do you have a view on that story? Um, not recently. I think uh, I was looking. There, there was some news on, on Clearwire or something. But um, I know cricket's fairly popular. Obviously, it's more of a budget type um, phone system. So I, I could see why AT and T is probably wanting to acquire it. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, well, it, yeah, interestingly enough, um, and I guess I should have mentioned this as part of the story, um, evidently the big reason, Matthew, is that um, there's a spectrum that was going unused, and the yep. value of that spectrum was roughly about $3 million. As you were so, saying that, I was actually writing down what I should say to you about spectrum. Nice. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did I mention I'm blonde? <laughs> no, you didn't mention that earlier enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, should I move to the next story, Brad? Hey, Jody. Yep, yep. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So you know how you try to take a picture. You know, you might be somewhere and you've got a big group of people and one person always gets missing from the picture because they're the one who's taking the picture. Mm -hmm. Well, Groupic for iPhone is a mashup where you can take the pictures and then mash them together and include the person who was taking the pictures. So kind of a neat um, app if you haven't taken a look at it. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay. Have, so, have you used Jody? No, not yet. I think it's really cool, though. I just haven't been in any groups. <laughs> okay. um, is that app for the uh, just for the iPhone as well, or Android, or? Well, right now they're launching for iPhone. Okay. All right. So you know, hopefully, I, I'm assuming that they will um, move to other uh, platforms. All right. Okay. Has anyone got a view on that story at all? Or? Doesn't Samsung have something similar with the, you know, uh, you can utilize the front? Um... Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. I haven't used that function yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it only does a postcard type well, size. Oh, so, okay, like, you basically okay. stick it on top rather than have yourself in the entire picture. Oh, okay. as we're doing. oh okay. All right. Um, go ahead, Jody. Any, go ahead. More stories, Jody? Sure, yeah. Um, Path, I know, Brad, you use Path a lot. Jacob does. I know Chris Voss is a big Path user. Um, apparently, Path is now doubling down on stickers in their newest version. Um, they also have a new iPad redesign and a world friending program. Um, any sticker old or new can now be used in the comments to respond to friends' moments. Path introduced stickers in their version 3.0 in March, and they had some very, very positive feedback. In the first 24 hours after the launch, they saw a million messages sent and made more money than it had in its entire lifetime as a company. Oh. Then Facebook, of course, started adding stickers and then branded stickers. And um, so apparently um, this this whole thing about stickers has been fairly popular. I, I don't. I mean, I, I used Path a while ago. I'm not a big Path user any longer. Have you seen them, Brad? I've seen stickers that look great. I've seen them. Yeah, they look fantastic. I love them. I love stickers in... Anything to do with apps. Stickers are great. Jacob, you love stickers. You'll... What do you think? They're pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I think Path is a really good experiment in uh, a social experience. Path has a really fun, easy, flowing user experience. And even though they only allow a maximum of 150 users or 150 friends on your account, I think they, they're one of those social companies I'm really watching because I think they've got the potential to absolutely grow out really quickly if they, they do it right. And they're, they're, they seem to be growing quite steadily. So uh, it's one to look at. Do you use uh, um, part of Andrew? Yes and no. I mean, I've got an account. I log in now and again. I do use it, but I don't use it every day. I use it more as a, an external sort of 
you know, observe as someone looking yeah. from, from the back to see what's going on. Yeah, same with me. I, that's what I use for sometimes. But um, what about you, Matthew? Do you use Path? I used to. I actually think that they've done a really great job growing over the last year. But I think really what made them hot from the beginning was their design. I mean, they were really one of the first people to really come up with that kind of design for a social media uh, company. Uh, and I think they've pushed mobile forward on many fronts. But uh, yeah, I think, I think their stickers are great. I've only used any of them, but like you said, they're, they're wonderful. Yeah, 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 definitely. I agree. What about you, James? Do you use Path? I have done in the past, but really what it comes down to for me is I've got so many different social areas that I'm trying to put content up that I having one by itself that's kind of restricted in terms of who it's going to and, and, and what it's going to do for me. It's just not really something that would fit into that kind of paradigm. Fair enough. All right, Jody, next story. Okay, for those of you, you Android users, um, apparently Google Maps for Android just started shipping last night and folks are already grumpy because one of the features that they had in the old version of Maps, this ability to save maps to use offline, apparently disappeared. There is a workaround. Um, it's kind of like an Easter egg and um, you know, that, you'll see that in the show notes. But uh, interesting developments. I think you know most of the, the carriers are having... Um, issues with maps for some reason. I know that Apple, when they um, introduced maps, their own maps version, people were driving off the road and getting lost in the middle of the desert. But um, hopefully that doesn't happen with this one. All right. Steve, you got a view on that story? Um, I, actually, I haven't used uh, Google Maps in a while, so I, you know, I, I'm not sure. I like the new maps on the Android. It looks great. I love it. Um, Jacob, what about you? Well, I've tried, I've tried the app. Yeah, you've tried the app and? It's so-so for me. Okay, well, that's probably you don't go anywhere. Uh, Jane. No, because my dad is the one that goes all everywhere. Well, your dad needs to get an Android phone, I think. Um, Andrew, what about you? <laughs> His GPS is Android. Okay, Andrew, what about you? Mm, no view on that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> no, you're not an that was diplomatic. It is, it is. Wow. He is honest. Okay, what about you, Matthew? Do you use Android or what do you think about the map maps? I use quite a bit of phones, but yes, I do use Android, and, and uh, I think it's great. I think they did a great job with it. What Android phone do you have? Uh, the LG uh, Nexus 4. Oh, nice. Good phone. Uh, mm -hmm. What about you, um, Chatterbox Live, Steve? Oh, no, I, have, uh, I haven't really used Maps. I mean, you, when I do, it's usually uh, I've got a dedicated GPS that it does Maps uh, instead of the phone. Occasionally, I'll use it if I'm very close and I might you know, use maps on the phone or something. Waves is a good uh, app. Steve, have you, used, have you tried Waves yet? What, you said Waves? Yeah, Waves, W-A-Z-E. No, no, I haven't tried that. Wazi, you mean? Wazi? Google, Google bought it or something. I don't know. Google, yeah, Google just yeah. Uh, recently purchased it. Oh. Waves, yeah. Waves. Uh, oh, okay, waves. what about you, okay. uh, James? Do you use Maps? Yeah, I use Maps all the time, and I'm, I guess I'm one of those few that are grumbling about the update. Um, so I look at it, I don't really care about saving maps or caching maps, um, but I've created a lot of My Maps, which is a Google feature that you can go in and you put pins over a map. So I've reviewed a couple of hundred uh, cafes around Sydney, um, and you can't access that anymore from Google Maps. Oh, so wow. yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer, but the rest of it, it looks gorgeous. It's uh, a lot cleaner design it seems to cache very well it seems to move very well uh, it's very it's i guess what you call a beautiful app but because they're removing the functionality like the latitude and and for me the layers it's a little bit annoying okay all right next story jody okay from the category of this is too cute not to talk about um for those gamers out there who love angry birds mm -hmm. um apparently there is a game that appears to be a sequel to the current angry bird star wars and um it's going to be coming out it's um they have an announcement and the image accompanying accompanying the announcement features a bird dressed like the young anakin skywalker wearing racing gear as in the 1999 prequel star wars episode one the phantom menace so um Anyway, I guess you guys would be excited about it, so I figured uh, I would... Uh... Well, personally, not really, because I'm over that game. It gets so boring after, after a while. Andrew, what about you? Do you get into that game? I don't really play too many of those games like Angry Birds and, and Candy Crush. I think I think they're good. My, my wife plays, like, she plays enough of those for me and her. She, she's got Farmville, about 15 of them. She's got a, a screen full of them on her phone, so I, I'm, I'm trying not to get hooked up into that sort of stuff 
getting to, getting, to can, getting to Candy Crush, man. That game is fantastic. It's so addictive. Mm. Getting to getting to Candy Crush. No, I don't want to because I'm 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 too busy. I'm working, and when I'm not working, I want to take take some time out and not use my brain because a lot of what I do during the day is creative stuff. So uh, I've got to try and take that downtime. So I don't really want to do Candy Crush and have to. I don't know, line things up or whatever it is you do on that game. Yeah, yeah, that's what you just do. You line them up and that sort of thing. Um, Jacob, what about you? Do you play them games? Yes, but very seldom I do because sometimes I use the app to watch the um, tunes that they make it weekly. Yeah, I love Candy Crush. It's a good game. What about you, Matthew? Do you play them uh, them sort of games? Not really. No, kind of just open it up, see what it's about. Not really for me. All right, cool, man. What about you, James? Uh, yeah, well, I play a, a ton of different things on my uh, my Android, but uh, I'm probably unlikely to go for a prequel Star Wars, being that you know Star Wars prequels have got a traditionally bad rap for uh, being useless and boring. Um, hopefully, this game is a little bit more interesting than uh, the movies. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, Jody, next story. Okay, well, this was reported by CNN Entertainment, and um, apparently, last night, if you missed it. You missed the Sharknado, and um, it was all over Twitter. Um, there was a movie that was uh, introduced on Sci-Fi Channel. Actually, it was a made-for-TV movie, um, kind of a campy pseudo-disaster pseudo flick that um, talked about a menacing storm that spewed hungry, man-eating sharks all over Southern California. So if you think of a mashup of a shark, a bunch of sharks and a tornado, that's what Sharknado was. But the, the thing that's kind of cool about it was that it did spur some very interesting comments on Twitter. Um, for example, here's one. If you're looking for one-dimensional characters, terribly inconsistent lighting, and sharks getting thrown out of tornadoes, I recommend Sharknado. Okay, here's another one. We are so fortunate to have this blessing to keep us entertained between basketball and football season. Um, apparently, there were more than one way to kill a shark. Um, ways to kill an airborne shark included... Shotguns, revolvers, chainsaw, knife, big stick, bomb, car, fire, pickaxe, sudden stop. And, um, you know, there were funny comments. Um, the Oklahoma Red Cross tweeted, we, su we survived the shark NATO. Be prepared for real situations, though. So uh, kind of interesting. <laughs> one, one other, one other um, aside. Um, evidently, um, an actor-producer, Kirk Fox, tweeted, just pitched my script Hurricane to the producers of Sharknado. It's about a hurricane filled with pugs. Very, it's very cute, but deadly. <laughs> so, Interesting. for those of you who are seeing this, this hashtag Sharknado, that's what it was about. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to wait until they get a, a zombie mashup of that one. It's, it's basically what happens when you vomit on your screen. <laughs> 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 Add some vampires in. <laughs> so. There are vampires and zombies. Yeah, zombies are really hot now. Yep. All right, Jay, next story. Okay. Next story has to do with the king of all social media. Um, our beloved Robert Scoble mm -hmm. um, has now been crowned the king of all social media. Evidently, um, he's been showing up a lot in all kinds of digital uh media, and uh, he reports on technology, obviously, um, but he considers himself still to be some kind of a hybrid between a technology expert and a journalist. And a uh, good article about him in SV411. I don't know if you guys wanted to make any comments about it. Uh, but I just um, want to say Robert Scoble does great stuff on the internet. That's what I want to say. Uh, Andrew, do you have anything um, about what Jody said, or what do you think? Yeah, it was it was a good article, and I think... I mean, Robert does so much for people who are not necessarily the the big guys. Like, um, just as an example, I'm 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 quite young with a startup, a very immature startup at the moment, and you know I can communicate with him if need be. He's on tap. His mobile phone is all over the internet. He's he's somebody who's available for anybody. And what that means is that he actually gets to talk to people before they're big. So if you consider people like, you know, Instagram and th these sorts of companies, he speaks to the founders when they're just a couple kids kicking around. Yep. Um, so he gets there and he spends a lot of time and effort dealing with people who may not be in the industry in a year from now. So I think it's really great that he puts the time and effort in from the roots to get that communication um, you know, with, with everybody and anyone who's got something to say. 
And hopefully he'll come to you when Zafe comes. When launch. Well, yeah, you, you never know. I mean, there's a lot of other journalists out there. I, I won't mention names, but I'd love to, who do not give you the time of day whatsoever. They'll only talk to you when you become a big player. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, when, when you do become a big player, good luck to them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What about you? What's your view on that, uh, Jacob? Robert Scoble? Yeah. He does some good stuff. Yeah, I wish I had um, that magazine to read it. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, you could read it on the internet. Yeah, you can read it on the internet. Steve, what's your view on that? What's your view on Robert Yeah, I, I, know you, I knew you had uh, Robert Scoble on the Tech Webcast a couple times before. He seemed like a uh, uh, quite a good guy. Um, of course, I do remember that one picture where he was in the shower with his uh, Google glasses. Uh, of course, I didn't really want to see that, but uh, that was an interesting story. <laughs> Evidently, that, and that's mentioned in the article. Apparently, his wife took the picture, and um, it, it went kind of viral. But you know, one of the things that's really kind of cool about Scoble is that he's genuine. You know, I don't think he's uh, presumptuous at all, and I, that's that's I think what makes him endearing to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, what about you, James? What's your view on Robert Scoble? Well, anyone who's able to get up to the microphone at Google I.O. like before they've started asking questions and be first in line, it's probably got some sort of skill in social media. But you know, having having never really met the guy or, or read that much about him, I, I don't really think that I'd be able to comment too much. All right, fair enough. What about you, Matthew? I think he's done a great job. He's kind of like a minor celebrity between all the tech guys, you know, in the industry. He kind of follows suit for what he says. Um, I think he's he's great at what he does. He's, has a long past. He has a long history in the tech industry for doing great things, and uh, I really respect that. I heard that you know that he uh, he kind of talks to entrepreneurs or startups before they become really big. I think that's I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we need more nowadays. Actually, so. definitely. I actually found some pretty cool apps through him as well when he does the videos. Well, that's where I got most of my apps for my phone and stuff. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, Jody, what's what else is happening? Okay, I just have a couple more. One that I had to announce because I am super excited about this. Um, for those of you who love um, Arrested Development, there's talk that there could be Arrested Development Season 5 coming to Netflix. And um, if you remember, the uh, Season 6 that just came out, it was only introduced on Netflix, which is kind of exciting because it um, kind of sing symbolizes the moving away from broadcast network only to uh, internet only, you know, releases. So I'm excited about it. I wouldn't, I, I personally want to encourage the producers to go ahead and do that because I want to see what happens next. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but the rest of development in my book is like top. So um, definitely had to uh, get that one out there. Any views on that story, Andrew? Or Andrew? The rest of development's awesome. Mm. <laughs> um, else, uh, James, do you watch the show? Uh, not really. Okay. What about you, Matthew? Do you watch it, mate? Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful show. And I think to the point of uh, Netflix, you know, adding another season would be wonderful, but they've done a great job. You're right. Moving away from kind of the cable, making people pay for their uh, their service with using uh, new content. And they also, you know, they created another show too. That was pretty great. So, uh, yeah. All right. What about you, Jacob? Do you love that show? Never seen it. <laughs> oh, maybe you should. <laughs> Just on TV, Soho tomorrow night is uh, Newsroom Series 2 starts, so that will be really cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, just while we're on talk, uh, uh, should I have Nancy? Oh, no, but no, I'm not going to say it. I'm just getting trouble saying it. I won't say it, but anyway. Um, Jody, what else has been happening? Okay, I have one other story which is kind of interesting, and it has to do with Google Glass. Evidently, there is a rival on the scene um, to creating a, a Google Glass kind of like a glass-like display. Oh, of course, it's much more awkward than Google Glass. There's a head-mounted display, and it connects to a laptop. Like, so I can't even imagine how awkward it is for people to be walking around like this. But what it does is it, um, it's a developer model. So if you wanted to develop using this, you, you could. Um, it's augmented reality through a headset, and it tracks your hand gestures and... I, I guess it would be kind of weird, though, because if you're sitting there and you're kind of gesturing in the air, people would wonder what the heck is wrong with you. But uh, anyway, for those of you who are um, intrepid developers, I figured I'd throw that story out there. Good story. I want to say, James, you got some new stories as well, um, a couple about Android stuff. So go, to, go over to you, mate. Yeah, well, basically, this 
It's really down to two players at the moment, it seems. Uh, Samsung and HTC seem to be taking up most of the highlights. Um, in uh, Sydney, there's already a Samsung Experience store, and it seems that Melbourne is about to get another one. Yep. Um, date is still unconfirmed, but basically it's going to be a place that you can go in and have a look and play around with the uh, new Samsung products. Nice. Um, it seems a little bit strange to me um, that they're opening up a, a brick-and-mortar store because, you know, being that I bought... I just recently bought a Samsung S4 um, and got it from Hong Kong from $600 for $600. Uh, and I think at the store it was closer to $800 that they were asking. So it's, it's definitely not a place to go for bargains, but it's a great place to get hands on. Yeah, definitely. Um, and speaking of S4s, uh, Samsung have already sold 20 million of them. Uh, oh. So it took 100 days for them to sell that many of the S3s, and they've done this in about two months for the S4. So, yeah, it's proving to be a popular phone. And, you know, being that I have one myself, I can't, uh, can't complain about that too much. I agree. I can't complain if I love my phone. Um, I actually went to a Samsung store at uh, High Point, Andrew. Remember that? Yeah, I do. It was uh, a, whole lot, a whole lot of fun. They didn't have as many staff there as the other big store above it, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that no, was a good. I went there the other day. It was a great store. I, um, yeah, I can't wait to, for the opening in Melbourne. Maybe I'll go to Melbourne as well and see. Well, the other big thing that they're doing is in places like JB Hi-Fi or in uh, Harvey Norman. Uh, they're doing the the model that they bring over from the US, which is bringing in. It's like a mini genius bar or a mini sales oh. section where they get uh, a staff member in there specifically selling Samsung products within another store. Good stuff. So, was it, so James, quick question. Were you, was it hard for you to, to move from the iPhone to an Android phone? <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't hard at all, being that I've never had an iPhone. Um, oh, whoops. It, <laughs> <laughs> I never had an iPhone. I don't know, someone had a phone. I can't remember what it was. Now they moved from Android to an iPhone. That, um, can't remember what. Yeah, no, I've had it's people. half the world. Yeah, I've had people who, who have done that more recently, um, and they were shocked. Uh, so back in the days of the Droid, I think a lot of people were laughing at the, the really jagged nature of trying to use the Android uh, API, uh, so, sorry, development areas and stuff. But uh, now that you're getting into the uh, S3, S4, it's, it's a totally different universe. It's so much easier to use. The devices are much easier to use. The picture quality is great. The screen quality is great. So, yeah, I don't think a lot of people have uh, many things to complain about. So what about if Andrew wanted to move from iPhone to an, a to an Android phone, what phone would you recommend for him to, to, to him to get? Um, well, for me, a big thing is the uh, battery. Uh, so I use my devices quite heavily. Um, so being able to have a removable battery like you can do in the S4 yeah. is a, a massive feature. But that said, the design quality of the H, uh, HTC is, is phenomenal. And having speakers on the front of the phone, it just makes sense. So if you're going to be using a device and you want it to look good, then I go to the HTC. If you wanted a device that really works well, takes fantastic photos, and has a removable battery, I'd go to the S4. Oh, yeah, S4 is great. Nice screen, 1080p screen, and that sort of stuff, and five inch screen. It's really nice. Mm. So, uh, Andrew, I think I would expect you have one by next week. Probably not going to happen. I'm, I'm more interested in having a look at what uh, Motorola Mobility is doing at the moment oh. with Moto X. There's a half a billion dollars that Google is tipping in to, to market that. So, that's, mm. that's quite interesting. That that looks like a really nice device too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good, good stuff. Um, what about you, Jacob? You went to Android. Um, what's your view on it? No, what James said. Well, I have an Android, but I have a Nexus Seven. Yep. And yeah, do you like it? And yes, and there, and there's rumors out there that they're saying they're going to be releasing a new Nexus Seven this month. All right, good stuff. All right, let's jump to the guest now. Uh, Andrew, who do we have on today, mate? He's a, it's a great guest. Yes, we've got uh, Matthew on from Quello.com. And as I said earlier, they are the uh, world-leading on-demand streaming service for full-length HD concert films and music documentaries with uh, members from over 40 countries around the world. How are you doing, Matt? Welcome, Matt. I'm doing really well. And can I, just add, can I just add before we start, can you please, please add some silver chair to the app, please? I'm trying to. I actually really do like that. I love Silver Chair. I love the, I love Silver Chair. The fact that you love 90, 90s music. I mean, that's a really big play. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they we're going to try to add a lot of music. great content. Not just, they did, but, uh, you After know, the 90s. The, 90s, the 90s lives on. I mean, we just got the Stone Temple Pilots in. 
Yep. Um, we have a lot of great content coming up. I'm really excited for it, actually. So t- tell us about the app and what it does, what it does, how much is it and that sort of thing and that sort of stuff. Uh, it's a free app, but uh, you pay monthly for it, $4.99 a month. Um, but the free part of it's really great. We've developed a really great product. Um, we get featured all the time on most of the marketplaces out there, that being Apple, Google, Microsoft. Um, so we're kind of, from a distribution standpoint, focusing on hitting just about everybody. Um, from a free standpoint, what we like to do is give away one or two clips for every concert, kind of, you know, sell you a little bit as far as how great our content is, since we are kind of a, a niche service and something that you really haven't heard of before. Um, and then on top of that, we also have a really great feature called Quello TV, which is kind of a lean back experience. That's really where, um, you know, you're at a party and you want to throw all the content from your phone to a TV if you have the opportunity to do so. You can just sit and watch all the best concerts that have ever been filmed in HD or SD. And um, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, so, how long have you been around for? How long has it been around for? Um, company's been around for about four years. I've been around there just around three years. So I came in kind of from the beginning. Um, you know, our company was started on the basis of actually shooting concerts, um, getting the rights for them, and then potentially distributing them. And then along the way. Um, you know, we became a really a rights organizational first. I think we are, will always be that. I think the most important part about what we do in the industry is that we do focus on rights. Um, you know, they're not easy to get. And I, and I think that's, it's, it's a real, um, it's a real plus for us to have the ability to go out and, and get those rights and work with the partners that we do. Um, I think in a, in a, in, in a way we're kind of lucky also to work with some of these great partners and get the content from them and actually know what to do with it. Um, you know, and from the other side of it too, is that when I came in around three years, um, three years ago, almost, uh, my focus was coming in from basically saying, Hey, we should be a mobile and IPTV focused company that way, you know, we can be ahead of the curve. And I think that's one of the things that, um, I've been steadfast on, uh, from the beginning, which is, um, you know, getting more content in the door, getting distribution and applying those two things to, um, building out great applications for IPTV and mobile. How do you go about actually acquiring these rights? That sounds like the idea of paying five bucks a month to use this service and watch all of this cool content and you guys are busy scrambling around trying to deal with record companies and things. How how does that work? That must be a lot of effort. It is. It is. Um, We have a team of about 35 people and uh, we all work very hard. not to be so general about it, but um, to give you some facts about how we get this content, um, Bob Frank, our president, um, and our CEO, Brian Lisi, um, they are tremendously um, awesome, at the least if I could say about them, at what they do. Um, Bob Frank has been in the industry about 30 years, if not more. And um, I think you know his relationships, I think the way that he carries himself and his success in his past is absolutely attributed to our success about getting this, getting this content. But I think also backing it up is um, my colleague, Rich Johnson and myself have gone out there and, and, and also got the distribution and put the word out there and, you know, got the marketing. So when you put those two things together, um, you kind of have, um, you know, it's not as hard as you think, uh, but it's definitely not easy. And, and there's definitely a, a long waiting time too for getting this content. Not everything is cleared right away. Um, there's a big discrepancy within the industry too about, you know, does everyone always own all the rights for a concert? That's not always true. Sometimes you just own the visuals, sometimes you just own the audio. And, um, I think we've done a really good job about getting the best of the best that's out there. And, uh, we have a, we have a long road to go still. And I think we're going to, you're going to see a lot, a lot more content coming in the next couple of months. All right, Jacob, any questions from, uh, for Matthew? What got you started? with Coelho? Um, my love for music. I was previously working at Billboard and um, I was uh, spearheading uh, events over there and I was lucky enough to quote unquote not actually get my MBA at a school but I always like to tell people I got my MBA working at Billboard and, and being a uh, kind of a mobile executive there and spearheading it there and uh, along the way I met, I was fortunate to meet a lot of the great CEOs and presidents and, and writers that are currently now at the top of their game in this industry. And uh, along the way, I said to myself, wow, video is going to take off. I should probably get myself into that somehow. And I, I happened to come across and, and meeting uh, Brian Lisi, who is the CEO of the company. 
And um, we did some really cool stuff together. He, we, we, shot a, uh, we shot a Creed concert, not to say if that's your favorite band or not, and he probably hates me for even saying this, but um, we ended up becoming good buddies. And then uh, when the time was that he actually raised the money and got some of the content in the door, I, I jumped over because I thought the opportunity was great and I, and I knew kind of what I could do with it from what I learned over at Billboard. All right. Uh, James, any questions? No, nothing uh, springs to mind. I think it's all been pretty covered already. All right, okay, good stuff. Um, so, Matthew, what's sort of what's coming up for the app on the Apple TV? You've just added it on to the Apple TV not long ago. I think it's great. Yep, June nineteenth. It is. It is amazing. I have to say, it's it's great being part of this very tight club um, that Apple TV has. Um, they are a, a wonderful company to work with, um, and uh, we've been very fortunate to have the relationship that we do, and um, it's been it's been very successful for us. Um, some of the coolest things about being part of Apple TV um, is the amount of time or the data that we get back from it, and it's it's unbelievable how much how much people watch of concerts. It's you, you would never think that people would watch as many as much as they do. I mean, on average, you know, people are watching anywhere from you know eight hours a week on the minimum side, anywhere up to fifty hours if they could, you know, for the last three weeks or two weeks. So. People are definitely consuming lots of content, and um, we're very fortunate to, to be on a platform where um, you can kind of put it on a real big screen TV. You can have your nice speaker set up to it, yep. and you really can enjoy the Quell experience, which I is what we're all about. Oh, yeah, can you, I love it. Can you, um, well, how much HD stuff do you have on at the moment? Is it all HD? It's not all HD. Um, I'd probably say around 50 or 60% of it's HD. But uh, the trove of content we're getting in in the next couple of months, if not sooner, um, will definitely add or increase that percentage to at least another ten percent as far as HD goes. Um, but the SD content's great. I mean, if you have a great TV or you know iPhone or any Android phone now, it makes it look you know like four twenty could look or four eighty could look great on your phone nowadays. So um, we do definitely take encoding and 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 the, and making sure the uh, the. The, the content that comes in the door is streamed at the, at the proper Kodak. We make sure the technology that runs our business um, is clean and efficient. And we also make sure that what you're getting on the other end is, is the best. So although it's not, we don't have all HD, it's something that we work towards every day. All right, go ahead, Andrew. Sorry about that. Cutting. Uh, oh. Sorry, I was just going to say, um, how does the content work as far as, is it streaming only or can you store or save or pre, if someone's got a slower internet connection, can you sort of... Um, bring it in and then watch it? <clears throat> no, unfortunately we do not allow to pin or uh, download any of these concerts. Um, it's a streaming business, um, very similar to a Netflix or Hulu um, or HBO Go. Um, you know, we do obviously have affiliates or partners that we could link, that we link to to, you know, potentially sell some DVDs. It's not really our core business. I don't even think that we do it on an everyday basis, but um, we've definitely done some promotion like around the doors. We did a uh, Facebook um, uh, premiere, concert premiere, where we actually streamed the concert through through Facebook, and then we were kind of selling the DVD along with it, and it was great. It was it was a really great experience, but it's not necessarily a core business for letting people to uh, to download or, or pin uh, the content to the phone, which we believe is kind of being eradicated anyway, right? By the, the ability of getting better spectrum, the ability of um, getting better phones, to, everyone's always connected now anyway, so it's. It just seems that, um, you know, uh, the streaming business is, is going to be long tail for us. All right, Jody, any questions for Matthew? Sorry about it. Jody. Okay, silly question, Matthew, and you may not know the answer, but the name Quello, what does it come from? Um, I like to make up really long stories and tell people as far as where it came from. Uh, okay. No, I, you know, I really don't know. Uh, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those things that, it could mean anything, but really what, what we're happy about is that it doesn't mean anything yet. And hopefully people, when they download this, they're like, oh, Quello, concerts. Okay, I get it. Okay. That, you know, and people always kind of wonder what it means, just like kind of like what you're asking. I, 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 hopefully people think Quello is just concerts. They're like, oh, great, I got the Quello app. I got concerts in my hands, you know. Um, but I could, I could, you know, go offline. I could tell you a long story of what I really think it means. Um, <laughs> but otherwise than that, uh, there's no specific meaning aside from the fact that um, you know, our, our job is to get concerts in people's hands. That's about it. Okay. If, if someone's looking for how would they find, how do you spell it so that, because we're, we're speaking about it, but, you know, how would somebody find Quello? 
It's Q E L L O. Um, our director of marketing came up with the very genius. Um, hello, uh, Quello. You know, Quello with uh, hello with a Q. Um, and it's and it's easy for us to say, and it's easy for everyone to understand. Like, okay, I get it right away after they say that. So the best way to remember it is hello with the Q. Okay, hello, and Quello. just forget the U. <laughs> There's no forget U. The U. There's no U. Okay. The, the U and Quello never got along. You get the U. Uh, Steve, any questions? Yes, yes. Um, uh, you mentioned before that you uh, initially started filming this uh, yourself, you guys, uh, your company. Um, I mean, are you still doing this, or are you kind of like hiring th uh, another company to do this now? And how do you exactly um, film it? I mean, how does the uh, the music groups, you know, uh, you get it? You have to have an agreement with them to do it, or the record companies, or whatever. I'll, I'll break that up in a few parts. I definitely get what you're asking, though. Um, I think the beginning of the company was definitely started on the fact that we should, you know, get a concert, we should get the rights to it, and we should distribute it. Um, we are currently not in the business of streaming live concerts. Um, we have done some live, live stuff. Um, we might be doing some partnerships that are able then to stream live concerts with very big bands. Um, getting the rights is, is not easy. Um, so it's another reason why we stay out of that. It's, it's that we know that it's a, it's a long tail business to get those rights. And right now, the best way we, we give back to our customers is getting the value add and getting that best content that's already been filmed that they want to watch or they want to listen to through their, through their phone. Um, is it something that in the future we're going to go into? Um, definitely. I, I think that it's some, it, as the field of streaming gets more commoditized, I definitely feel as if that's something that we will we'll definitely go into. Um, just kind of like Netflix is expanding their library by doing their own content. Um, we definitely feel that down the road we will definitely embark on, on doing some really cool stuff, maybe getting involved in some festivals, maybe working with some really big partnerships out there you, you know, that we can, we can jump into. So um, it's definitely something we're open to. And, and in fact, I love that stuff. So hopefully sooner rather than later. Is there some sort of free try before you buy content available? Absolutely. We give seven days um, free to just about anybody. Um, we actually just made an update on our iOS app um, basically two or three weeks after we came out with Apple uh, for Apple TV on Apple TV. And uh, the seven day trial, it's, it's unlimited. You can stream as much as you want. And after the seven days, um, it's, it's up to you to continue forward. We've had uh, some pretty good success with it so far. Um, people always ask us, is it better to get 14, 7, or, or 30? Um, we tried all. We tried a lot of them. Um, we're never, you know, closed-minded enough to say, hey, maybe we'll give 14 or 30. Um, but right now, 7 is working pretty well. Our customers are liking it as well, and uh, that's what's going on for that. Yeah, I, I love the the, the app um, on the Apple TV. It works really great to me. I love music. Um, just a request, but can you please add some Aussie music? Concerts. Some Aussie music. Yeah. If you know what, I would love to. You guys have a great rock down there. I'd love to add some rock. I love to add some bands. Aussie rock. There is so many good Aussie bands down here. It's funny. It is. No, I agree with you. I hundred percent agree with you. Um, if you know anyone that has content down in Aussie that would love to send it to us or work with us, I'd be more than happy to take a call with them What's and start getting some Aussie content in our door. Good stuff, mate. What's the email address so people can email you some info about that? They can email you about that. Yep, it's Matt, M A T T, at Quello, Q E L L O, hello with Q, dot com. Good stuff. Um, Jacob, what's your view on this app on the Apple TV? You've been using it at all or not? No. Why not? Spotify. Oh my God, you're such a. I'm, I'm not going there, mate. Oh, uh, hey, uh, okay. hey, there's a uh, question in the chat room, maybe. Uh... Go ahead, Steve. Um, yeah, there's somebody says, uh, will this do HTML5 uh, or is it all Flash or what, what kind of um, way, way, you know, any codecs you need to uh, watch it? Um, that's, that's an odd question. I'll do my best at answering that one, though. Um, we are multi-platform. Um, do we focus specifically on building out applications for HTML5 framework? Um, not necessarily. Do we have it in some of our code bases? That yes, um, Kodak is a little separate from that. That's really more with the video. Um, we have you know multiple um, Kodaks for all of our content um, that we stream on twenty different platforms and um, over a hundred over hundred countries worldwide. So oh, okay. um, 
that's not it. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. So, Matthew, um, where can I get you on Twitter and stuff? We need to wrap up this podcast. So, thanks for being on, mate. I love the app. Um, where can they sign up and that sort of good stuff? Yeah. Uh, just to wrap it up, thank you for having me. And great, great meeting everybody. Um, you could go to Quabble.com. You could check us out. You give us seven days free. You can sign up. If you have any questions, please feel free to ping me anytime. I'm always around. And um, and send me if you have any problems or if you have any any ideas to make the product better. I'm always open to that as well too. Obviously, we listen to our customers. And um, I really enjoyed being on this on this podcast. Thank you for having me, Brad. No problem, Matthew um, and uh, Andrew. Final thoughts, and that's what was good. And you know, what do you want to say before at the end? Yeah, great to, to have you on, Matthew and uh, Fridley. Um, appreciate your uh, opinions and so forth. And uh, Quello, hello from Quello, sounds really, really cool. I'm gonna, I'm actually downloading it right now. I was going to try and jump in there beforehand. I've got a few mates who I know uh, are big music video fans who are going to absolutely love this. So looking forward to that. Enjoy the week, everybody. And you can grab me at zafo.com forward slash at Andrew or Twitter and Facebook forward slash Ari from Oz. But, hey, hey, Andrew, you also have an Apple TV too, don't you? You're going to use it on Apple TV? Yeah, absolutely. I've got an Apple TV. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to, to jumping in. And uh, I thought it'd be good to learn a bit more about it today. And exactly. I'm geared up and ready to go now. All right, mate. Enjoy the music. Uh, Jacob Jones, final thoughts. Good show. You can follow me at jazzbot 326691 z and me, uh, Vodafone sucks on 4G. You can get me on Twitter at Brad Alden and Tech Webcast. Steve? Uh, you can find me here, uh, here on uh, justin.tv forward slash Linux Cool Dude and uh, on Twitter as chatterbox underscore live. James, what are you, man? Yeah, it's going to be really surprising. You can find me pretty much as Fridley everywhere. But if you go to fridley.com.au, <laughs> um, that pretty much has a link to everything else. All right, good stuff. I'll put a link in the show notes to your website. Um, Jody Rains. Yes, you can find Find me on Twitter as Sunswept, and pretty much everywhere else is either webmarcom.net or Jody Rains. Okay, good, good stuff, Jody. Um, Steve, final thoughts. Oh, um, I, I, I like the show. The, the news was interesting, and of course, Quello. I found it interesting as well because um, uh, we've, I think, done streaming video before, but not necessarily uh, concentrating with um, concerts and uh, documentaries. Because you're in the music, you see, you love music. You, love, you got into music, don't you? Yeah, well, lately not not so much, but um, of course, uh, my music uh, stuff has changed. But I actually got a couple of uh, um, DVDs. I think I got concerts on. Cool. All right. Good stuff. All right, uh, Andrew. That's, that's great. great. That's great. That's great. All right. Thanks for being on, Matthew. Appreciate. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks, James, for coming on, mate. Thanks for the Android updates and that sort of good stuff. Anytime. Okay, and thanks, Andrew, Jody, and Jacob, and Steve. And uh, Jacob, you lost the game. <laughs> hey guys, if you if you guys if you guys um, send me your guys emails, I'll hook you guys up with some accounts. Most up to date important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. Weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, seven thirty p.m. or GMT plus ten. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However you get us, just make sure you do listen or visit our website for more information. www.aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest running tech news podcast well that's it for tech webcast this week thank you for tuning in we hope you enjoyed having your mind expanded tune in next week for more tech talk with brad jason and whatever crazy guests they've managed to rope in don't forget to get the tech webcast app from itunes follow us on twitter at tech webcast and of course check us out on facebook too until next time may the tech be with you peace